going to study tonight in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 15. This is part two of our series on eternal security and how God, we saw last week we went into detail how, how the Lord secures us eternally. We went at the heart of one of the heresies that has been inflicted in the church for some odd reason, we don't know why, I mean, misinformation, people that really haven't studied the Bible. There has been a movement and, been, and has been taught by people that you can lose your salvation. We studied last week, we went in in-depth, right? And we showed you verses in the Bible where Jesus himself said, that's impossible, you cannot lose your salvation. Um, many people have come to me personally and asked me that question. I've had pastors, fellow pastors that have come and asked that question. They show me why they believe the way they do is that you can lose your salvation. And then I show them in the Bible why it's impossible. If you believe you can lose your salvation, you're calling God a liar. Basically, that's what you're doing. You're saying God does not have the power or the authority to keep you in His hand forever. Now, when you tell God He can't do something, you don't think that's stupid? Is that the stupidest thing you've ever heard? That God, you cannot protect me. God, you cannot save me. God, you cannot preserve me. Just that line of thinking should, as a believer, a born-again believer, you should say to yourself, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in your life. God can, is willing, and is able to do all things. And one of the things that he does is that he protects his believers, period. Satan has no power or authority over your life. Do you understand that? Satan has no power or authority to steal your salvation, <clears throat> to steal your life. <clears throat> Satan has no power or authority to steal any blessing that God has given you. So if you are roaming, if you're thinking in your mind, wallowing in the despair of uncertainty, be certain of this, is that God is able. And that with God all things are possible. I'm going to read to you this evening one of the most profound and popular verses of the Bible in Matthew. And this week, I'm not going to get into detail or names, but God has sent people my way to minister and counsel. The problem, and I'm going to say this with all honesty, the problem with the world today, the problem with us Christians is that we're trying to make the world godly and it's not going to happen. If you, this is going to answer some questions of why things are the way they are in your life. If you ever wonder why your life is the way it is, this is going to answer some questions tonight. Matthew 7, 13 says, Enter in at the straight gate. <clears throat> Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Let's stop there. The Lord Jesus Christ, in His own words, is not encouraging us, is not influencing us. He's basically, He is commanding us to go into the narrow gate. Have you ever caught that in verse 13? Jesus says, enter in at the narrow gate, the straight gate. That's a commandment from God. Jesus never gives options. Do you understand? He never gives options in anything. God, do you know who God really is? Who is God to you? God is creator. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning God created the what? Heavens and the earth. He's creator. Number two, he's all powerful. There's nothing and no one more powerful than God. God knows everything. God sees everything. God is sovereign. There's no other God but he. No one shares his power. No one is equal to him. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, I am the only God who is, who is none like me. Who is like me? There is none like me, he says in Isaiah 46. <clears throat> when you take God's word and you misuse it, misinterpret it, use it for your own personal gain, you are actually committing the worst kind of sin in taking God's word and twisting it. 
God created the heavens and the earth. God created us. He did not need help in evolution. He did not need help in any other process or form. God created us outright. God created heaven. God created hell. He creates all things. God is in control of all things. God controls the days, the hours. He controls the breaths that we take, the numbers of, number of hairs in our head. He controls everything. And there is nothing outside of the reach of God's control. If you understand that concept, then you must understand these next verses. The devil is in charge of this planet. He is doing whatever he can to inflict, uh, to inflict penalty and punishment on the believer. Because verse 14 says this, verse 13 it says, For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be at which go in. Jesus himself said that many people are going to go into the wide gate that leads to destruction. Jesus himself said that. Now here's the interesting thing we must remember. Jesus knows exactly the amount of people that will not be saved. Do you understand that? He's God. He knows everything. But yet he encourages us to enter into the narrow gate. The gate is narrow. Why is it narrow? Here's why. Because that gate represents Jesus Christ himself as the only way, the truth, and the only life. Now look at verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few, few there be that find it. When the rapture happens, now, now I'm going to warn you tonight, this is a warning. This is not meant for, to sensationalize anything, but it's a fact. When the rapture happens, and it will happen, the day after the rapture, the churches are going to be full everywhere in this country and on this world. And those are going to be people that are filled with people they thought that were saved and were not saved. They're going to be filled with people that were misled, people that took God for granted, people that were not saved and told they were saved by church membership, good works, wherever. And they're going to crowd the churches. And they're going to crowd the churches so much that they're going to beg for answers. And that's where the false prophet comes in. You see, the devil knows how to play people that are blind, deaf, and dumb. He preys on our insecurities and he preys on our fears and doubts. What was the weapon that Satan used in the Garden of Eden to tempt Eve? Yeah. Doubt. What was the weapon that Satan used to get Adam. Doubt. Okay. What was the one of the main weapons that Satan tried to get Jesus after 40 days of fasting and prayer? What was the one weapon that he would use against Jesus? To try to use against Jesus? Doubt. Folks, if you doubt anything, don't ever doubt God. You understand? Because God is real. But very few people, and it says in verse 14, few there be that find it. There are very few people that will find this path. Here's the thing. This evening, your relationship with God is the most important relationship. And the only way you can establish that is through His Son, Jesus Christ. You cannot establish your relationship with Jesus and someone else. You cannot establish that relationship with Jesus plus someone else. You cannot establish that relationship with Jesus, with Jesus plus the church, Jesus plus good works, Jesus plus ceremonialism, Jesus plus tradition. It doesn't work that way. It has to be solely and focused on Jesus. If it is not focused and solely on Jesus, you are not saved. Are you listening? You are not saved. The people that go to heaven, go to heaven on Jesus' terms, in His blood, in His mercy, in His forgiveness. And if you equate salvation with yourself and saying that I had a part in it, then you're not saved. And that's on Jesus' word. Jesus is telling us very plainly, broad is the way of destruction and many are on that path. 
you cannot be a Christian, a believer, and support the things of this world. It's impossible. You cannot be a Christian and compromise. You cannot be a Christian and do the things that you think are right. Which leads us to verse 15. Because of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves, ravening wolves. The word ravening means hungry, big appetite, ferocious, not satisfied. These are people that prey upon the souls of those that do not know God's word. These are false prophets that prey on the doubts and insecurities of believers. These are people that have led people astray into thinking that they're going to heaven, which they really are not. And these are people that are basically providing their own way and means to get to heaven. They take God's word, they twist it, they point to another gospel, they point to another Christ that's not the Christ of the Bible, and worse yet of all, they point to a God that doesn't exist. Now let me take the time to say this. You have heard here, and if you follow us, if you're a subscriber, you've been following us more. But you have heard here said about false prophets, and you've heard the direct criticism, and really just flat out persecution against them, of what they do. These are people that are willingly and publicly make no bones about what they say and do, for their own benefit and gain. They deny the God of the Bible and they deny the Christ of the Bible. They have pointed out things in the Bible that are not there, like losing your salvation, which is impossible. They point out things in the Bible that Jesus is politically correct, that Jesus would accept homosexuality into his church, which is also false and blasphemous. They point out that the only church is the Catholic Church. That is false, and that is blasphemous. The Catholic Church is not a real church. Are you listening? The Catholic Church is based on the principles of Babylon. Their worship has been tended and corrupted by the worship of statues, the worship of Mary. They call their priest, the, and they call the Pope the Holy Father. The Bible says in the book of Matthew not to call no man father. Amen? Not to call no man rabbi. Why? Because you have one Father in heaven who actually created you. Your daddy did not create you. Are you listening? Your Father in heaven created you. You, are, you belong to God. He created your soul. He created your spirit. He created your body. You were made in the image of who? God. False prophets fleece the sheep. They fleece them of their money, their time. They fleece them of their worth. They fleece them from going in the wrong way and rejecting the way of truth and righteousness. And here's another thing that really just, I'm going to let it out tonight, so please do not be scared here. Verse 15 is not just talking about the false prophets in the day and time of Jesus at that time. Are you listening? Jesus is talking about false prophets that will exist until the time he comes back. False prophets didn't just stop at the age when Jesus went to heaven. False prophets have been around a long, long time. And they have led many, many people astray into the broad way of destruction. These people prey upon your doubts and insecurities. Here's how they do it. If you don't follow their teaching, if you don't follow their way, if you don't follow their interpretation of the Bible, you are wrong. You, will, you cannot exist. You cannot grow as a child of God without their ministry. Does that sound familiar? Do you know people like that? Do you know people that say that if you don't contribute to their ministry, and if you don't follow their books, and if you don't follow what they say and do, that you're not going to grow and, 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 and exist as a Christian? Do you know people like that? I do. And these are, are the very people, the very people, 
that know what they're doing, they're calculated, and they, the only reason that they exist is because you make them exist. Because of ignorance. You don't know. Have you ever heard once in this ministry that we ask for money? Yes or no? We have never once asked for a single penny from you. We don't ask for your support financially. We want your prayers and we need your prayers. But that's it. I'm not in it to have a 401k. I'm not in it to have a Mercedes. I'm not in it to have a mansion. Are you listening? Look at the clothes I wear. Does it look like this shirt was a gift? This pants, practically my wife begged me to get these jeans to wear. I am a sorry sight of a man if you saw my appearance. You will not believe that I am a pastor by the way I dress. If you judge me by the cover of my book, you're going to say, you know what, that man is nothing. You know they did that to Jesus? Did you know that? When they saw Jesus coming, they said, how can that be the Son of God? Look what he's wearing. How can that be the Son of God? He has no palace. He has no army. He has no mansion. He teaches us on hilltops. You know why, you, you Israel, you reject the Messiah and don't believe in him? Because he doesn't look the part. Oh, he's Mary and Joseph's son. We saw we studied that last week, right? Oh, he yeah. can't he can't be our he can't be a Messiah. He's Mary and Joseph's son. But here's the sad thing, Israel. And the sad thing is, is, is that you will receive a Messiah, but it's gonna be the Antichrist. He's gonna fool you and deceive you. Yeah. And you're gonna make a covenant with this guy. And this covenant is gonna be for seven years. But midway through this covenant, three and a half years, he's going to break the covenant and try to ruin your country and overtake it. He's going to sit on that throne that reserved for Jesus at the new temple which is being rebuilt. And he's going to claim himself to be God. And the first thing he's going to do in that temple to claim himself as God is to ask for the worship of, that of the nation of Israel that he is to Christ when he is not. You're letting the devil in your home you're letting the devil into your country. And he is going to overtake that nation. He's going to come in, sit in what is rightfully Christ, and he's going to say that he is the Christ. And you will allow this. You have allowed this to come in. But let me tell you how God, how God is so gracious. God is so gracious is that he's going to stop the Antichrist right there and he's going to kill him. But it's not going to be by your hands. It's going to be by the hand of God. Now this is the part that you really need to listen. Are you listening? Why do you listen to false prophets and you don't listen to the real child of God? Why are you listening to false prophets and you're rejecting and ignoring the people that are really sent of God? Right? Why are you doing it? Why are you rejecting the people that you should be listening to? They rejected Jesus. They didn't believe that He is the Son of God and Messiah and they rejected Him. They listened to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they listened to everyone else, but when they came to Jesus, they rejected Him. Why? Because we are all born sinners. We are all have sinned. That means that our mind, our heart, everything is corrupted and tainted by sin. We are dead in sins. And unless Jesus gives us the vision and gives us the understanding to know who Jesus is, we will never know. Why do you not listen to what Jesus is telling you? Here's, let, me, let me put it in layman's terms. God gives me visions. He gives me things that I see. I don't ask for it. I don't say, give me a vision for today. He gives it to me. Do you understand? He expects me to tell the people what He's telling me. 
Do I ask for it? No. Do I want it? It scares me what I see. But I have to do what my boss says to do. Now, wait. The responsibility is on you. You take it. If you reject it, that's on you. But when you get to heaven, Jesus is going to ask you, why did you not receive the word that came from my servant? What are you going to tell him? Well, because he wore blue jeans and old shirts and he didn't look the part. Eh. Well, because he's not perfect. Eh. Who is perfect? Who is perfect? Are you perfect? Why do you judge people and say, don't listen to that guy because he's got issues of his own? Look at your past. Are you proud of your past and the choices you made? Do you think God is pleased with everything that you did? How dare that you point... Now, false prophets, you point the finger at. They deserve it. The Joel scenes, and I'll name it. You think I'm scared? Joel scenes, T.D. Jakes, the charlatans out there, they deserve it. But don't you point the finger at me. Don't lump me with that crowd. Don't lump this church with those churches. Don't lump us within them. If I tell you something, you better listen. It is getting close, folks. You can plan for all that you want in November, December. We may not see November, December. Amen? You can plan all you want in your life, but God has the final say whether you want it, believe it or not. Well, my mom, I don't care what your mom or your dad said. They're not God. Are you listening? The only reason that you have what you have is because God gave it to you. Right. Well, I credit my success to my aunt and uncle. They're not God. They didn't give it to you. Who gave you the ability to work? Who gave you the ability to breathe? Who gave you the ability to exist? God. They didn't. Do you credit and give the glory to God? Or do you pound your chest and say how big and bad you are? Do not judge others without looking at yourself first. I have never said I was a perfect man, and I'm not going to. I've never said that I was, that I was the, the greatest servant of all. I'm not. But do not doubt what I'm telling you right now. I'm not doing it for money. I'm not doing it for popularity. I'm not doing it for fame. I'm doing it because that is what God has told me to do, and I'm going to do it. And if you have a problem with that, you take it up with God. Let's get back to the real meat of it. Let's look at the gates. I cannot believe in this thought. Ask me if some people are so stupid and ignorant that they don't understand this concept. And why am I being harsh? You think this is harsh? Wait till God gets a hold of you in judgment. You want to talk about harsh? That's going to be harsh. Woo! Well, that won't happen for a long time. There was, there was a shooting in Alabama today. Three people were hurt. Those three people could have been dead and met their maker today. Shootings in theaters, shootings in schools. Now you got shootings in churches. Someone could come in here and just ram us out and work while you're working. Someone could come and shoot you. Oh, that doesn't happen here. That's the same gullibility and ignorance that Satan preys upon. Oh, it can't happen to me. It can happen to you. Yes, Your life is not guaranteed. Your plans are temporary. Your breath is not accounted for. It could all be gone. In two weeks, the Pope is going to open his plan at the United Nations and at our Senate, at our House. And he's going to introduce a plan for globalism and a one world government. And here's the sad part. Are you ready for this? We're going to agree to this. What? Count it. Write it down. 
write it down on this day and hour, we are going to fall prey into the globalism market. And it's going to be headed by the false prophet himself. And the reason he's coming to the United States is because he's counting on the support of the United States to galvanize and to bring everyone together. And we're going to do it because we're stupid. You got to take a page out of Donald Trump because we're stupid. We're ignorant. We think we know more and better than God. That's called the Broadway. Well, let's look at the Broadway. First of all, the Broadway is popular. Have you noticed that now that if you criticize sin, that they call you names like a bigot, a racist, a homophobe, that if you go out and tell people this is sin, this is not right in the eyes of God, that you immediately label as a bad person? The Broadway is popular. And one of the things that Satan feeds upon is that sin is popular. You can legalize sin. Abortion is an example. Alcohol is an example. Did you know that more people are hurt by alcohol? We talk about marijuana, we talk about heroin, but did you know that alcohol is the number one most abused drug of all in this nation? And it's legal! Well, it doesn't affect me. When your dad, when your mother, when your brother, and when your sister is hurt or killed by that, then it affects you, right? The heck with everyone else. As long as it doesn't touch my family, I'm all right. That is very selfish. Popularity of sin is no joke. God hates it. Look what it says here in John 15. John 15, 18. Listen to what John says here. John 15, starting in verse 18. I'm going to tell you something from God. God, Jesus is going to tell you this. Not me. Jesus is going to tell you this. You or we are supposed to be a hated people. Did you know that? Wait, wait a minute, Pastor. You mean if I'm a believer, I'm supposed to be hated? Yes. I told you this is going to be wacky tonight. This is something you never heard in your church. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, a real born-again believer... You're going to be a hated person. They're going to hate you. Don't take my word for it. Listen to what Jesus said in John 15. Look at verse 18. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Did you know that the world hates Jesus? Yes. That's why he was crucified. You think that was an act of love on their part? They hated Jesus. They wanted to kill him by the same people of the same Judaizers, the Pharisees and Sadducees. They planned a conspiracy and they brought it to fruition with the help of the Roman government to try to kill Jesus. And the only reason that they tried to do that was because that was part of God's will. That's the only way that we could have been saved was through the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior. But Jesus says, you know what, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me before it hates you. Let me ask you a question. Are you hated? Do people hate you? Well, they love me. Why do they love you? Jesus says they're supposed to hate you. Well, what's wrong here? Or well, Jesus didn't mean it. Jesus said, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. That's what Jesus said. Well, let's go to verse 19. Let's make it very clear. If you are of the world, the world will love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Now let me ask you the question again. Are you hated by the world? Does your family hate you? They're supposed to love me. I'll tell you something. I can read you verses in the Bible where Jesus says families are going to be divided. Amen? And that he's going to be the divider. Maybe you may not get along, but why? When it comes, you don't talk about religion and politics, right? Yeah. In other words, they don't.